Welcome back, Death Toll Racing. I got the Safari Wagon behind me, and this is Dino Video. So this is going to be a troubleshooting collage video, of basically the last month and a half of work I've done on this thing. Uh, I'm just going to pull out the highlights so that you can kind of get caught up to where we're at on this thing right now. So this is an L83 2017 5.3 direct injection motor, pretty much stock. Uh, manual valve body turbo 350 and it's a manual transmission computer. Uh, this is a little bit of troubleshooting, a lot of bit of troubleshooting, uh, and then some dyno tuning. Uh, and it's back here. Spoiler alert, not 100% done, but I want you guys to be caught up on where this thing's at because I'm going to start knocking out a lot of other projects on this. Uh, and then in the middle of that, all of a sudden we're going to be doing diagnostics on, uh, a few of the it running issues before we bring it back to the dyno for its final tune. All right, guys, welcome back. We are going to be trying to fix our mass airflow sensor today, and we have a special guest. So I did the next most practical thing. Uh, I didn't have a very good scanner, so I made Austin drive up from Arizona so he can use his scanner. It was only so, a 20 hour drive. No yeah, it's deal. no big deal. It's, it just wasn't practical for me to go borrow one locally. This is my first time using this. Uh, they sent this out to me. This is made by Top Don, and it looks kind of beefy. Yeah, uh, it looks really nice. It looks a hell of a lot better than my Actron. Yeah. Yeah. So we've both been using the Actron 2. I also use the Blue Driver. It works pretty good, uh, but we're going to see what this can do. Yeah. So the symptoms are a rough start, rough, rough start, running, and a rough mass running, air sensor. Mass airflow sensor, or uh, mass airflow sensor code, uh, and then also it is acting like it goes in lint mode. Uh, so at, at heavy throttle, right. So. so the Actron, you can plug it in and you can get like a voltage reading for the mass air sensor. Yes. But that's pretty much that's it. Pretty much so we're hoping this yeah. can do a little bit more. Yeah, so we'll figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, it could have something to do with our air filter being too small. Uh, that, that is my first guess on what, it, what the problem is, but uh, it does seem a little far-fetched. So we'll see. Yeah. It might be wiring. Who knows? Let's get it fired up and plug yeah. it in. Too good. You read the English, I'll read the Japanese. All right, I don't see Japanese. Oof, I guess I need this one. Do you have the intake tube for this engine? No, it was in a wreck and okay. it was destroyed. So I, we can go and try to, or we can go to the Spalding's and see if they have one. Yeah, that's what I'd be curious about. I'm really confused as to why the voltage was going so high up and down, but it did that after we removed the filter. On the oxygen sensor? On the mass air filter. Oh yeah, the, yeah, like it's getting cavitation or something? Yeah. What we're going to do to simulate having a smaller intake right now, since I am going to have to, I'm going to have to cut this out, unfortunately. Um, we're going to just dent it. Uh, I'm going to dent it. Uh, Austin's going to come down. We're going to see if that improves our numbers, or maybe we could even dent it and get it within range, so it's actually running all right. Uh, and then once I get my parts that I had to order, we will cut this section out and replace. And here's how you tune an LT motor. I'm gonna call that good right there. It's a professional dent. That's how you tune a Chevy right there. 
Oh, that's, that's really calibrated. That's a calibrated dent right there. Well, unfortunately, the dent didn't make a difference in the numbers, so I got our parts for our reducer, so we'll put those in and see if those make a difference. Okay, so now we need the three and a half inch sleeve. That makes it three and a half inches. Okay, so I started it, it did a rough start. I forgot to turn the camera on. Um, it, it all of a sudden like gave up or something and just started running normal. So I'm gonna see if it had a, uh, if it ends up having a check engine light or, or what. And spoiler alert, yes, check engine light and it made no difference in the numbers again. All right, so, so far, nothing we have done has made a difference. We should have been seeing an increase in air volume from what the computer sees uh, since the speed of the air going past mass airflow sensor was increasing. Uh, we're not seeing any of that. So I figured we must be doing something or missing something. We brought it up to the dyno tuner to see, and uh, the look on my face uh, just right there uh, kind of explains it all. Okay, so what you just witnessed there, that was the foot to the floor, that's what this thing does. That was the foot to the floor, that entire dyno. Uh, and that's that's what this thing's been doing. So we were looking at the fuel pressure there to see if it would uh, was increasing and decreasing with that, and unfortunately that wasn't the problem. Um, so we're kind of still at a loss on this thing. Uh, we're not having too much luck here. It seems to be running worse uh, now. All right, guys, so that was unfortunately, I have just, camera roll after camera roll after camera roll of that exact same scenario. That's all it would do uh, at the dyno. Uh, and here's the kicker. We couldn't get into the computer. Uh, the computer was requiring a pass key. Um, what's really odd about that is it, is it is impossible for PSI to have put a pass key on that computer. So how that happened, we have no idea. PSI has no idea. We have no idea. Uh, the only thing, there, there's a couple scenarios that could have happened. One, it could have been, it, it's obviously a salvage. It's a 2017 Camaro 6.2 manual transmission computer. Uh, it got separated from its engine for some reason. Obviously a total loss, computer was gone, or the, the engine was gone, maybe it was a flood, who knows. Uh, but there was obviously some sort of damage with that computer. I think it was just corrupt. Uh, it didn't respond to any changes we ever did it always had sporadic numbers uh almost like you had like wiring crossed or like you forgot to put all the ground cables on the engine or stuff like that that's like the scenario it was ha that that was happening with that computer so psi sent me a new computer i put it in oh now it actually responds like you expect it to uh if i make changes in the in the intake and all that stuff you see the numbers on the other end all that fun stuff started happening so i'm like now we got it so i took it back out to the dyno so here's day two at the dyno which was a couple weeks later uh so let's jump into it right now all right we're dyno testing the safari my guess was 286 for the first call and his was 2 so we give it up at 266. We'll see where we're at.
fucking e on. Oh, what the fuck? Woo. I never turned it on. I was like, damn, it's smoky. It smells like Teen Spirit coming out of the exhaust it does, right it now. It is Teen Spirit. Wait, shut this down. guys where are we at uh i got i got it back here in the shop uh it has a tune in it it runs it runs i mean we could drive it around and stuff it wouldn't be a problem um but if i went to race someone it would be a problem uh so here's the problem we're having it is knocking um a pre-detonation knocking not rod knock or something like that uh it's pre-detonating uh we don't know why it's consistent across all cylinders uh we moved the sensors side to side the knock sensors to see if we could maybe see a characteristic that would go from one side to the other and and we couldn't find anything uh retard the timing back couldn't find anything um it, it would just make the engine lazy but it would still have knock um and then i had the epiphany after i brought it home i'm like i know what the problem is I put non-ethanol fuel in that thing, 91 octane. If it was race gas, it'd be different. Uh, I think that's the problem. Uh, direct injection, remember, uh, going right into the cylinder. Uh, ethanol, when you inject ethanol, it makes it has a cooling property to it because it evaporates really, really fast. Uh, that's why you see a lot of E85 tunes and stuff like that. They have a ton of ethanol in them. Uh, and that's why guys can make gobs of power on E85 without detonating. Um, so I think that's the problem. That thing has fuel injection curves and all that stuff counting on that ethanol doing a little bit of cooling. Um, so we could probably tune that out of it by really messing with the injection tables and stuff, but that, that, uh, it shouldn't, I shouldn't need, we shouldn't need to, uh, it should, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, and I think it's happening because, because of my decision to put that non-ethanol 91. Uh, and the reason I did that is just for the moisture thing. Uh, I don't drive it all the time. It sits a lot. It has a steel fuel tank. Uh, it is a sealed fuel system now though. Uh, but, but, uh, so, so moisture being introduced in it is less likely like carbureted and stuff. You don't want ethanol, any carburetor. You don't want ethanol, any carbureted fuel system. You don't want ethanol. Um, but being sealed and all that stuff, ethanol should be fine, uh, in it. So I suspect that that is the problem. That's why we had that knocking that we couldn't get rid of because it was just going to happen no matter what. It was essentially running like a diesel, which these things essentially kind of do anyway. They just uh, inject right into the cylinder, just like, just like a diesel does. So, uh, I think that's what was happening. Um, okay. So to prove that theory, we are going to buy HP tuners. We're going to get a couple credits so that we can log this thing into it. Uh, and then we can actually do some of those diagnostics on our own. Uh, and that way, the next time we bring it back to the dyno, he can actually tune the thing instead of try to diagnose why the stupid thing doesn't want to work. Uh, so that's the plan. But in the meantime, we're just going to start knocking out other projects I want to do on it. So we're going to get the interior done. We're going to get our top in. Remember, we got that soft side back top that we're putting in it. Um, and then we got all the interior, got the rear seats and everything. We just got to start doing rhino lining and all that crap. Uh, a little bit of rest repair, a little bit of body work, and then the rhino lining we're going to do on the body uh, and that type of stuff. I'm going to cut the knuckles off front axle. We're going to rotate those uh, so that we can get our pinion angle and our uh, caster uh, to go hand in hand. Right now, right now I'm sacrificing on both uh, and it's sacrificing both. <laughs> so we're going to fix that. Should have done it from the beginning, but 
it is what it is. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So anyway, that's that for that car, uh, and then we will be back on it here very very soon, as soon as everything pans out. Uh, but behind me, that'll be the next video you see is the big death toll ram that just got unwrapped. So you're gonna be seeing the video on that and seeing why I unwrapped it. Uh, but it's good for the channel. It just sucks for me. So anyway, stay tuned. We'll see you again soon. Diagnose, I am OBD2 Akila used to literally stand behind it and dance. Oh, Jesus. She'd be like, yeah, like that's not like so, it's, Well, no, it's so I'd watch. Because yeah. yeah. I was like, I didn't want to look at the camera for some oh, reason. When I first started okay. doing it, I didn't want to look. I'd be like, so this is what we're doing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so she'd just sit there and dance. Just to make sure the automatic detection is turned on, connect to the DLC.